So could you tell me a bit about the reputation of sound designers then? Because I come from the theatre, I don't do a lot of music theatre or opera, so I'm away from that part of the design. But, you know, in our world in theatre, there's, oh yeah, so-and-so is a great designer for actors, and so-and-so is a great designer for spaces and sets, and so-and-so is a great... Con that in our family of theatre, designers have different palettes, and we know they're different palettes. Oh, mm -hmm. Graham would be fantastic for this show, yeah. given Graham's palette. Is it the same with sound design? Sure. I mean, it's certain designers would be better for a certain kind of show, something right. that's more chamber musical or something that's more rock or something that's more pop or, yeah. But I have to say, that's one of the weakest, I think, one of the weakest parts of musical theater, I think. The quality of the sound? Yeah. Or the mix of the sound? Quality of the sound. Well, the mix, I suppose, yeah. It's, boy, it can make or break it, you know? And to find that balance of making it sound like it's real people up there actually doing something live and not being over-amplified. I constantly think it's over-amplified. Jesus, stop screaming at me, you know? <laughs> That's how it feels. God, okay, I hear it, but where's the, no finesse, you know? It's like there's no room for it or something. Everything's jacked up. Wah! You know? Oh, What's the taste God. for volume then? There is a taste for volume. We like. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. It's like now everything loud and high. The higher the better. Just scream out those high notes and everybody goes crazy. What the f*** is that? Why do you think they go crazy with the big notes and the high notes? I don't know. When did that start? Is it power? Is it... Oh my God, look how I can go. Is it, look how long I can hold a note. Is it? Yeah, it's just, I, it's the, I don't know, that freaking, uh, what is it? What was that show? The sudden stardom thing. Uh, oh, come on. Chorus Line? The big contest. No, the TV show. Oh. The, the big contest. So you can think you dance or find, yeah, yeah. Everyone's All those a singer guys, or whatever, yeah. Whatever that first one, Idol, American Idol, there. I don't know, it must have started before that, but that is when I became acutely aware of that particular phenomenon. As soon as somebody, you can't just sing meaningfully. You gotta just sing some big high note. Just blast that high note and hold it a long time. And then everybody goes crazy. What is that? That's nothing. That's a technical thing, that's fine. You go, Yahoo for you, you can belt that high note. Yes, I mean, you know, it's been a big part of my career too. But that's not the part you should applaud. You should applaud the whole trajectory that that song took to actually get you the right to sing that big high note and hold it and make you go, oh, oh my God. But not when you're standing, oh, she held it for two bars, we better go crazy. I mean, what the hell? It's so pathetic to me and so is that, juvenile. Is that fast food power? Yes. What I call fast food. There's fast, yes. fast food acting, okay. right? Fast yeah. food acting is, you know, make it sexy, make it violent, whatever, yeah. fast food, make it beautiful. But that's fast food. It's like yeah. the, the taste of fast food hamburger as opposed to a real meal is what you're describing, yes. how the journey through that song to get to there, to get to there, and to finally to crest on that note. That is a great meal. Yeah. So it's a kind of short form. We want a short form, right? I want the big hit now. Yeah. Yeah. And it drives me crazy. Well, I'm glad because it drives me crazy too. Oh. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand volume, except that volume seems to be mis uh, supplanting passion. We okay. have substituted volume for yes. passion. Yes. So we no longer understand passion. Yeah. Vol volume is fantastic, but you have to earn the right to get there. Like, like anything, like passion. The passion can be controlled, sitting there, boiling, ready to go, and then when it finally unleashes, then it means something. Same thing with the big high notes. You have to earn that. My God, you know the first show, one of the first shows I ever did in my life, a little review at the McManus Theater downstairs at the Grand Theater in London, Ontario. And it was called Rhythm Blues and All That Jazz. God <laughs> bless you, Rob Wellen. He had put that together. And I remember I had to sing, one of the things I had to sing was Maybe This Time. And I loved that song and I, with a trio and I was so green. And I sang it the first time in rehearsal and Rob 
said to me, okay, we're going to do that again. And I want you to sing that song again. And you will not hit even a mezzo forte until you're three quarters of the way through that song. And I thought, stupid note that is. I was pissed off. Because when you're young, yeah, you just want to sing the hell out of everything, right? Listen to me with my big notes. And that is the best damn piece of advice I've ever been given, I think, as far as song performance. I said, no way. You are just going to sit there, and you're going to tell me that story. And you're going to get worked up and frustrated. I want to see that happen, but you're not going to save it. And how long did it take you to learn that? To truly learn to, it, to truly I think, learn. oh, probably <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> but, I, see, I lost my voice. I would lose my voice. I was so new. I, I hadn't studied theater, singing, nothing. So I just wanted to sing the hell out of everything, so I lost my voice all the time. I mean, I learned by doing, and it took me a long time. But I figured it out on my own. Well, that's the same with acting, right? All young actors, act hard, act big, act whatever, energy, energy, energy. So energy becomes a substitution for content, right. for story. Right? But energy doesn't mean... No. Yeah. No. This can be energy, too. My God. Yeah. yeah. 